humans also can struggle at those ends of the distribution points as well. And so this is not going to be something that we should be holding, you know, autonomous vehicles to a higher standard than people end up getting held to, you know, in the long run either. That's a hard point. And I love talking about this because we are held to a different standard. Um, if my daughter, who's in her 20s now, uh, gets into an accident and hurts somebody really, really bad, um, we might go to court. There may be a you know, vehicular homicide accident if somebody got killed or something like that, right? But ultimately, it's like humans make mistakes, and you're never going to read about it. But that number of 40,000 accidents we have in the United States every year – somehow doesn't matter compared to like one robot or one autonomous car doing it. So it isn't the same standard for somehow. And the only industry that I think can see through this right now is the insurance industry. Uh, now that we're at a point where it does seem like v version 12, the way it's using neural nets end to end to make decisions, to ingest data, to create outputs. Do you feel like uh, this is going to solve for some of the hardware related questions you've had in the past where maybe you felt like there wasn't enough hardware around the car. How are you thinking about that equation now? Mm. Yeah. So first of all, end of one, you know, weekend, uh, I haven't driven 12 to three that far, uh, but you can't change physics. So my position has not changed. Uh, I firmly believe the B pillar is too far aft uh, to go completely autonomous, which means remove the driver from the seat in an unconstrained ODD, operational design domain. And I say that specifically that way, meaning they can use this current hardware if they chose to restrict the operational design domain to somewhere where the physics or the uh, the obstruction dynamics of a, of a single camera looking left and right without any parallax and also a less than optimal, I won't say it's impossible, less than optimal camera location to allow the regulators to completely uh, remove the driver. And I say that because Creeping is the solution that they have used to mitigate the risk that is imposed by a B pillar that does not have the benefit of pa parallax for depth perception and also the position being behind the driver's head. I constantly find myself leaning forward when I know the B pillar is back here, and I'm like, well, it's got to creep up at least that far if it's going to see what I'm seeing. Um, and it comes into most risk with high-speed cross-traffic because high-speed cross-traffic, and I say high-speed, let's talk above 50 miles an hour, okay, or maybe somewhere in the 65 kilometers per hour range, that pixels equals distance. Resolution equals range for a single camera that has to detect something coming at that speed. And when you have a camera, and I'm not going to say what the range is because you can get into the photons and the bag of dot, the bag of light, the points, and, and you can start to extrapolate that range isn't the same. But the point is, is that resolution has a finite amount based on the lens and the objective part that can detect the photons. The number of seconds you have for your entire latency stack for the system inference all the way down to control, you know, with what it can see at this range is, is about three and a half to four seconds. So if you have a motorcycle that's going 75 in a 50, you just shrunk that time and the computer, all, oh, by the way, can't use the posted speed limit as the amount of time or the speed that they can use. So I'm sticking with my um, opinion. I hope I'm wrong. I would love for my hardware three car to let me sit in the back seat. I just think it's going to be an amazing ADAS system. The driver is its mitigation for the ODD, or they have to constrain it to somewhere where they know they don't have any obstructions or the creeping works in every scenario, right? Because uh, I don't think they can generally release a solution that has some constraints unless they manage it another way. And maybe they can get creative uh, and come up with something. But the fact that they're changing their language, even when they talk about the next-gen platform being the internally called robo-taxi platform, to me implies they're changing their language a little bit. They're changing their tune, and they're sort of saying, mm, we're going to focus on this Robo taxi, if we're going to call it a robo taxi, they're not even using the terms. Um, Elon's even changing the word assisted driving sometimes. Uh, supervised, I think, FSD is what he's called it a few times in public recently, uh, which also is probably intentional with the words he uses. So that was a long winded answer to say, no, I'm not changing my opinion. Deep down, I hope I'm wrong. But the reason I'm not changing my opinion is because creeping is still the only strategy they have to see around a blind corner. And there are a lot of obstructions out there in the world. I do think they will get to the point of looking through windows, looking through glass, maybe peeking through trees and leaves and, and, and seeing motion and going, whoa, something's there, even if they don't know what it is. I think they'll be able to get to that sort of a thing. Um, 
So, and and for people that doubt me, I'm just going to keep on going while I say this. For people that doubt the, that creeping is risky, I would say, how far are you willing to put your car that you invest your money or your life or your family's lives in out to the edge of traffic? And if you are of the opinion that you're willing to take it all the way to the white line and say, hey, it's safe, it's not going to go past the white line. I would tell those same people, get out of your car and walk out there and stand on that white line where your toes are there and tell me if you think that is safe. If you think that you can trust that someone texting or not paying attention might not swerve just a little bit and hit you without the protection of the car around you, then it it truly eats into that buffer that most of us as human drivers have learned to have as defensive drivers just to give yourself a way out uh, for someone that might be swerving or something like that. Anyway, long-winded, but I haven't changed my opinion, and that's how I come to that conclusion. No, I I love that. Han, sorry, let me just do a a quick follow-up question here. Um, so do you think that it will be a level three system maximum? Is that how, or you think it's level two capped? No, it, it could probably cross into some of the level three stuff. I do. I just, I think yeah. the driver has got to be in the seat it, it, on this current hardware. I, I feel like they could have mitigated that with cameras forward of the current side view mirror location because that is kind of the leaning forward capability that most intersections are designed with you know some people love to say the long hood car argument from the 70s and we can safely drive this sort of stuff and for people that think that you can drive that way or that you even do drive that way i use the analogy also put yourself in the seat and put your seat all the way back to where your head is even with your b pillar now duct tape your head to the headrest and go drive and tell me that without leaning forward, you're willing to do an unprotected left-hand turn with an obstruction. You won't do it. You just don't realize how much you do this. And oh, by the way, your head moves, your eyes move, your necks move, and you pivot. So the human is not just two cameras on a single gimbal. There's a gimbal here, there's a gimbal here, there's a gimbal at your waist, and you also gimbal this way too. So there are more axes in the human than uh have been used in the rhetoric about that camera and we also have parallax that can measure uh closing distance a little bit better than the single b pillar yeah i think those are great comments and actually leads me into the fact that you even mentioned level three that you know the levels even though elon has kind of poo-pooed them in the past i think that they exist for a reason a continuous spectrum and that the tesla community in general falls into the trap of thinking about robo taxis versus full self driving in a digital or a binary way of it's either a or it's b and the reality of the situation is that it's much more likely to be a continuum that we march along and that you know probably actual robo taxis that no one has to sit in a driver's seat are something that comes with the next iteration of the vehicles that are specifically developed with that in mind. And they can, you know, obviously when Elon was talking about all of these things and Tesla was making these plans, you know, they are moving aggressively towards a goal that they believe is possible but they don't have a full understanding of what all the constraints are going to be. And so it's not that he's lying when he says, this is what we're doing. Mm-hmm. That's what they were trying to do. And they made a a failure, you could call it, in the way suite is architected that's going to provide some limitations on the functionality long-term of the existing fleet, but they can fix that on the fleet moving forward. But at the same time, just because that may be the case doesn't mean that the business case and the the economic opportunity for Tesla goes from you know an incredible opportunity down to zero either that level 3 technology that you can literally like if you can go to sleep in the seat until it vibrates your butt and zaps you with electricity or whatever and says hey wake up dummy take over like that system is, you know, 10 times or maybe even 100 times more economically valuable than what Tesla is actually monetizing FSD at today. Yeah. 
I completely agree with that. And, and there are times, uh, even driving version 11 on the highway, I feel it is already level three. I think of the number of times I actually interact and think, well, that was optional. I didn't really need to do that. I turned the blinker on because I wanted to change lanes. If I didn't change lanes, maybe I'm just going to be the little old granny that's lane hogging or something like that. But it truly does do most all of the work and many of the inputs I make are not safety critical. They're more preferential and trying to avoid being that kind of guy on the road uh, that perhaps is not doing something. And I think V12 uh, point three and beyond is starting to get there in city streets. Um, there's no doubt about uh, it. Having more eyes for a distracted driver is already valuable. There's no doubt about that. Um, some of the corner cases that we talk about and love to talk about, and honestly, we talk about corner cases because everything else is getting so good. And I love to make the analogy, and I've made it, I think, with you guys before, that it's a bell curve of its capability. The beginning and the ends are kind of where everything is, but man, once it get out, gets out on the road, it can kind of do most of it. It can get itself in trouble sometimes too, but so can a Waymo or so can a Cruise. And I've driven at a Waymo, so you know, with Omar uh, in San Francisco, and I know that autonomy can be done but even that turn i got in this weekend that i posted on x with you know it went down it got stuck it honored the left turn lane but it found its way that is an additional function that is now working that allows it to resolve the issues that it creates for itself just like when omar and i took that waymo and it got in stuck in the wrong lane and we're like there goes our waymo and it went all the way around the block and came back and got us same thing humans also can struggle at those ends of the distribution points as well. And so this is not going to be something that we should be holding, you know, autonomous vehicles to a higher standard than people end up getting held to, you know, in the long run either. That's a hard point. And I love talking about this because we are held to a different standard. Um, if my daughter, who is in her 20s now, uh, gets into an accident and hurts somebody really, really bad, um, we might go to court. There may be a you know, vehicular homicide accident if somebody got killed or something like that, right? But ultimately, it's like humans make mistakes, and you're never going to read about it. But that number of 40,000 accidents we have in the United States every year somehow doesn't matter compared to like one robot or one autonomous car doing it. So it isn't the same standard for somehow. And the only industry that I think can see through this right now is the insurance industry. I think they are so money-based and risk-based that they can see through to that end game of, oh, this will save us money. We should be doing this. But somehow the way the media cycle works and the way humans are allowed to be flawed, but somehow machines aren't, it, it, it isn't an apples oranges game. This, and Elon's even said this, it has to be 10 orders of magnitude better for them to even consider it.